In the last video, we used Cursor AI to create documentation for this project called Commandlet. Now, at the end of that process, we had an extensive documentation system that included a whole lot of code examples, which will be really useful for any AI pair programmer. Now, in this video, we want to look at Handlebars JS, and in particular, let's fix up the documentation that's missing from this internal project of mine. So today, I thought we'd use ChatGPT Canvas, see if it does as good a job or maybe even a better job. I'm Happy Dave, please like and subscribe and let's get into it. So I've come over to ChatGPT and what I'm going to do is select the new Canvas model. Now this is designed for writing code, not for writing documentation, so I'm not even sure how well this is going to work. But what I do know is that in the last video when we were creating the documentation for this commandlet tool, it ran into a few problems and the nature of the problems happened to be how ChatGPT and different systems like this work with code examples. So if you look at this markdown document where we've got he level two headings, we've got some text going on, we've got a little command showing up inside of ticks. The moment it gets to a triple tick like this, which is what we use when we want to show different formats of code, this was breaking the formatting within the chat window within Cursor AI. Now, what I'm hoping I can do is use GPT Canvas and let it think of the document that it's building as just a markdown document of which there is a combination of markdown and code in it. But let's start writing a prompt. And what we'll start off with is I'm going to give you a raw markdown document. You will be helping me create a new markdown document for a different project. What you need to focus on is number one, good clear documentation for the new project, and number two, formatting markdown with code blocks correctly. Note that the code example which we will be working with in the new project will either be Ruby blocks or handlebars JS blocks. So we'll go over to our other project here and we'll click on code and this gives us a raw format. What we can do is press the copy button here, come back and we'll paste it in. And let's just see what ChatGPT Canvas can do with this. Firstly, this is already a whole lot better than what Cursor AI was doing in that we don't see these breaks in the code flow from Markdown, which is all this stuff here, versus the actual code snippets that are being shown. Now, if we come over to the left here, we've got a chat that says, it seems like you want a new document for a different project that still focuses on good documentation. It wants to do formatting for Ruby and handlebars examples. And we can start doing a chat in the left. I'll say, I want you to give me an outline and I'm going to give it a bunch of files. And I want it to just stick to the heading one, heading two, heading three. So we'll say here is the existing outline and we're going to have to go and get that. So let's figure out what files we want. Now the Handlebars JS project has a library folder and it also has a unit test folder. And under this we have what are called helpers. And the helpers are really just Handlebars helpers that are hooked up to the commandlets that we looked at in the previous project. So there'll be things for case transformation like turning text into a constant format or a title or a dash notation. So we know where we can find the structure. It should be there. There are probably other information that might be useful for the documentation in this particular area. We would call that configuration or setup. And as for examples, there should be examples down in the unit test. So if we go to the unit test and we open up here, we'll go and have a look at the inflection and maybe look at the pluralization and we can see how it could be used in handlebars and the sort of output that should come from it. So what I'll do is go into a terminal and I'll run a little tool and it's called GPT context. And what it's going to do is capture the files. And we can just see that if I go straight into a text area and paste it, it's also in my clipboard. We will go back to the chat window and we'll paste that information in there as well. Let's just check it's all in place. It is. We'll press go. And from that prompt, what I'm hoping we'll get is a new markdown document that's really only focusing on the structure. So information is coming through. It's trying to do some configuration, which is a little odd because I haven't given it any information just yet. Now, when I look through this, it's 
done some things correctly, but it's missed part of the prompt that I stated. So the first thing we look at is the helpers. I've got at least six different helper groups. There's only three listed here. It's also giving installation and configuration, but we've not given it any information to work with yet. And while the examples all look like handlebars, again, we haven't given any examples for it to work from. The only thing that feels quite correct is this file structure down the bottom. So let's just write a correction prompt here. You went and included details, which will be incorrect because I haven't given any information yet. You don't know how it's configured and there's no examples. Then we say you are only meant to write an outline in headings like level one, two, and three would be good from my point of view. You also only wrote three helper groups in the table of contents. There are six in the structure. So I'm just letting it know that the old mark down document was for style guidelines, not for informational purposes. And we'll press go on that and let's see what it comes up with. So we've got handlebars at Ruby helper documentation guide. The title won't be quite correct, but that's okay. We've got a good table of contents now. We've got a file structure. This is looking perfect. Now let's go and fill out some of the documentation. And I think the area I want to focus on is just here. So we can start writing a prompt and the prompt we'll go with is I'll give you example code from the root of the application and we're just looking for it to figure out from that code introduction, configuration and setup. Coming back to VS Code, what we can do is click on the lib folder. We've got the handlebars and I believe these are the files we probably want. So I'll go into a terminal and I'll put in this command that I've got called GPT context and we're only looking for the files in that particular folder and there they are listed here. Now if we just paste that in you can see it's in the clipboard but we can just change this command slightly. What we'll do is get the format of tree turned off and what it will now do when it finishes is give us all the code. So now what we've got is the tree structure that is definitely put in each time plus the file name related to each system we got code and as we move down we got the next one so what that means if we go back over to the web view we should be able to just pop in over here paste it all in now there'll be things in here like the version which isn't relevant so hopefully it doesn't fill that particular information in but now we've got an introduction we've got installation handlebars helpers that's not actually correct it should be handlebars js and i can change that later it's now started to fill in information which it feels like it might have missed the point a little bit though this area looks pretty good now it's got a couple of mistakes i've just started a prompt please correct these mistakes so the first thing that i can see here is that this is not handlebars helpers it's actually handlebars js the configuration i'm hesitant to include this because it didn't get it totally from the information i gave but i might leave it for now but the actual helpers this is a bit of a problem so we'll just change this we'll say i never gave you any example helpers i shouldn't see any usage and the gem is not called handlebars helpers it's called handlebars js so we'll run that and the way it rewrites everything from the top, and that can be a little bit slow, but it's still incredibly fast compared to previous versions of ChatGPT. And it's a lot more accurate than Cursor AI, so I do like that. So we'll leave that for what it is. We've got some helpers, we've got some registration, we've got some troubleshooting, we've got contributing, and we've got the file structure. What I'd like to do now is fill out the usage instructions. So if we go to the table of contents, we've got available helpers we've got all our different categories looks like we've got string helpers twice there not sure what's going on there and i think if we head over to the message box we'll go with the prompt can you work through the following unit tests and write down the instructions in the markdown document under available helpers we're trying to go into this section right here what it should focus on is one or two usage examples for each helper. I know from the unit test that there may be more than one data scenario with each of these. So we'll see what it comes up with. 
Now we'll come back to VS Code, we'll go over to the spec folder and let's go have a look at join. So here we've got the values of 1, 2 and 3 being joined together. Now by default if you do join and values it'll be 1, 2, 3. If you provide a separator it'll be 1, pipe 2, pipe 3. So these are the sort of usage examples that we want to see. So we'll close that down, we'll go into our terminal and we'll use our command and this time we're looking for the files that are in the spec folder and they're all listed here. Now if we just change this command a little bit and we'll get rid of the format, we've now got the code as well. And from there we should be able to go over to ChatGPT Canvas and paste it in. Based on that prompt, that's a lot of information coming through, so maybe there'll be some mistakes. We've got our installation, we've got our configuration coming through, and now we've got available helpers, so the safe one with a value. Input, hello, name, world, output, hello, name, world. But if we look at our join that we were just looking at, we've got value input, values are one, two, three. Join with a pipe should be one, two, three, now I've just had a little bit of a look through the documentation, everything looks good. So what we should do now is publish it and make it available for a project. So what I'm going to do is just click on the copy button and where I want it to go is into the handlebars project. Now this project is two years old and it hasn't had a change since about a year ago. It had a minor change and if we look at the current usage documentation, it's not available. So this is what we're going to change. So let's head over to Cursor and what I've done is I've just changed the path of the documentation and created a new empty file and we should be able to paste all of that in. Let's just do one little check to see that visually it looks okay. Things seem to be coming through okay. I'd like to just publish this up to a RubyGem repository. So what we're doing at the moment is just merging the changes into the repo. It's going to update the semantic version number. Hopefully we're going to go from 13.1, I believe it currently is, to version 14. That's also going to bring it into alignment with the other project that we just did, the commandlets, which are currently on 14 as well. So once this in place, we should then be able to use the documentation in the next project that we're going to be working on. Now the CI pipeline just finished. Let's check out what it's done. So currently we're on version 0.131. If we refresh this, we move up to 0.14. The documentation, there's the old documentation. Let's update it. And I did get a misspell here, but essentially all of the documentation has now come into place. Let's have a look at the Ruby gems. So currently the Ruby gems should show commandlet on 14 and handlebars on 13.1. But if we refresh that, that has now moved to 14.0. So both of these are in alignment as well. Now with our documentation created, let's check out how we could use it in an AI pair programmer. I've come over to the Cursor AI IDE and there's a brand new project that I've started called KTemplate. It's an embedded web server that uses handlebars templates to render information. And what I've just quickly done is come through, we've got some dependencies here. We should change them to 14 because this is what the gems are going to be. And lastly, we need to go and check the settings within Cursor. So at the moment we're on general. If you head over to a concept called features, you can scroll down and add documentation into the system. So we'll click on add docs and I'm just going to paste in the information. I've changed the letters usage, so that should be okay now. We'll press enter on that and it's now starting to add handlebars JS. We'll press confirm on that and currently it's indexing. So what I'll do is I'll take us over to commandlet as well, and we'll come back to cursor, we'll add docs. The last one has finished, so we can now add in commandlet. It's probably gonna ask the same question, we'll press confirm, and now it's starting to index that documentation as well. Let's just do a quick progress report. In this video, we've rapidly created documentation using GPT Canvas. In the last video, we did the same thing, but we used Cursor AI to create the documentation. In the next video, we're going to bring together both pieces of documentation to rapidly create a web application that uses handlebars. I'm Happy Dave. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.